It's rare that you read a book that changes how you completely conceive of your spiritual life. And recently, I've read two of them. I'm only going to be talking about one of them today, and that's Magic of the Ordinary. So let's talk about that, shall we? Hello and welcome back to the channel, or for the first time, whichever the case may be, my name is Charlie. I've have had one of those magic moments where my brain has uh, experienced new input, new information that has recontextualized just about everything inside of it. And so that came from reading these two books. The first one is Magic of the Ordinary by Gershom Winkler. And the second one is The Hebrew Priestess by Jill Hammer. I will be talking about this one a lot more in future, but this one's going to take a lot of time to live with the information that's in here. There are a lot of practices in here that I am still trying out and playing with, and playing with is definitely not the right word, but I am doing the experimentation with, and yeah, that's a dense book with a lot of good stuff in it. But today we're going to be talking about this book, Magic of the Ordinary, and how it completely changed everything for me. So, a little bit of backstory. If you don't know, I am a practitioner of creation spirituality, and a big part of that is what we like to call deep ecumenism, where we look outside of our own native spiritual tradition and seek out wisdom wherever we can find it. And over the years, I have adapted a very eclectic spirituality a lot of which is owed to Rabbi Rami Shapiro and his wonderful book, Minion, which kind of gave me the basic spiritual practices that I do on a regular basis. My core theology really does come from kind of this mishmash of Lurianic Kabbalah and Matthew Fox's original blessing, coming of the cosmic Christ, creation spirituality, reinvention of work, prayer, all the books by Matthew Fox. And, of course, my native Catholicism, which kind of influences all of this. As a result, I have, from a very young age, practiced variant types of magic and mysticism in an attempt to have a better relationship with God, the saints, and the angels. That has continued to this day. But this book, this book, really rooted it so firmly in the tradition that I come from, that I am a changed person. I am a new person, and a lot of things are going to be changing. I'm going to be talking a lot about that on this channel in the weeks to come. First of all, at the beginning of this book, Gershom Winkler makes a very impassioned plea to retire the term Judeo-Christian, and I see where he is coming from. I really see where he is coming from. The animosity and violence that has existed on behalf of the Christian community for our Jewish brethren has been just villainous and evil for the vast history of the two religions coexisting. What I have always found most interesting is I've always been on this kind of quest to find that primordial Christianity, because I feel like the institutionalized church had moved it very far away from what it was intended to be. And this book kind of posits this idea that Judaism was simultaneously pushed away from its roots by the church as Jewish populations assimilated and modified their practice so as not to incur violence on behalf of the Inquisition and the pogroms that hit the community. I think he makes a very good argument for that and a very strong argument for that. And I think the same thing happened in a lot of Christian movements where a lot of ideas were stripped back, a lot of practices were either removed or not talked about. And then by the time you get to the Reformation, it becomes more of a game of politics and brinksmanship than it does one of spirituality. And things rapidly descend into chaos from there, especially on the Christian side of things. So 
what he is trying to do in this book is reconnect back to a what he calls the shamanic in Juda- Judaism. What was that aboriginal Israelite religion that was practiced prior to the diaspora, prior to this assimilation into and forced upon them by the Judeo-Christian world and worldview. And it's a really interesting path that he takes. For anybody who's done a lot of reading in these fields, he goes back to a lot of the Hecalot literature and a lot of the early Kabbalistic literature, and also spends a lot of time in the Talmud to reconstruct this way of seeing the world as blessing, as magical, as infilled with spirit and life and reconnects to the rituals and practices and mindset that you would find in that early time period. And I actually felt a lot when I was reading this, it reminded me a lot of Meditation in the Bible by Ari Kaplan, where he practices what he calls linguistic archaeology and tries to go back and discover what practices the prophets engaged in. And that's a fascinating book. We should talk about that sometime. And it also reminded me a lot of Bruce Chilton's Rabbi Jesus, where he does very much the same thing and goes back and looks at the early church and the early teachings of Christ and tries to see them as they would have been spoken by a first century Jewish rabbi, as opposed to a third and fourth century Eurocentric Greco-Roman Episcopate. And I, I really feel this urge and this longing to go back to this original state. I think he does a really good job with it. I'm not going to talk about everything that's in here, but I really enjoyed the path to getting into the story about how the four directions and the four rivers of Eden and how that connects to the four worlds that we find in the Sefer Yetzirah and throughout most of Kabbalistic thought, how that connects to everything. I really found that very powerful and very moving. And I also really like how the book is extremely (laughs) extremely and noted so you can see exactly where he's pulling all of his information from and you can go and read it for yourself you can check it for yourself and i i rather appreciate that and i'm very grateful for that as well the world view that he postulates in here is a very powerful one and it is one that has really affected my practice a lot ever since i read the way of jesus by bruce chilton i have been trying to get back more to this sense of what the first century jesus and paul would have understood as an exorcist and a prophet and i feel like that path of thinking leads right back to this similar place that we find here of this shaman, shamanic Judaism, this, this shamanic in Judaism, this world that existed, this folk religion that was very much there. And a lot of the things in here actually make some of the acts of Jesus and Paul make more sense. I, I am a firm believer that Paul was a practitioner of the Hecalot practices of the Merkava mystics, and that you can really see that etched throughout his theology and his letters. I found such a profound connection. Like, this was the missing key that kept me from understanding my faith. This kept me from understanding my practice. This prevented me from connecting fully to the world around me and to God, the angels, and the saints. And I will forever be grateful to this book for doing that. Now, having said that, there's only one thing that I, I'm not even going to say that I disagree with the book about. I just find it extremely thought-provoking, and I have yet to have my mind settle on an answer to this. It is when he talks about the shading, and oh, I don't want to get into this. I may eventually make an entire video about the shading, but the word shading is almost always translated into English as demon, and he kind of makes the argument that it's best translated like the Greek word daimon more than the Judeo-Christian word demon, that they were nature spirits that were neither good nor evil. That basic misunderstanding has affected the way we have reacted to the world ever since. 
I don't know. I, I, I see his argumentation. I have heard this before in discussion with rabbis that I've had. It's not the first time that I was exposed to that, but it, it is such a interesting thought to hold in my head that I have not allowed myself to spend the time in study and meditation that it requires to truly come to a firm understanding on where I stand on that issue. So yeah, that that's one of those things that kind of just just blew my mind, and I am still reckoning with that. The rituals that are included in this book are beautiful, they are powerful, they are really, really good to try, and I highly recommend it. They, there is not a Kindle, at least as of the recording of this, when I got this book there was not a Kindle version of it, so you have to get the, the hard copy, but it's, it's worth getting, it's worth reading. I stopped highlighting some chapters because I found myself highlighting like entire pages. I have been taking notes and notes and notes, and I have redone so much of my own internal understanding of how I work, how the world works. It has this book has helped bring me alive in a way that very few works have. So I highly recommend it if it is something that would help you in your practice. Magic of the Ordinary by Gershom Winkler definitely check it out. It is it is powerful. And we're going to be talking about a lot of how this has interacted with my devotions to the Black Madonna and to my own ritual life and my own life of ceremony and practice, because it has really changed a lot. And that's what a lot of what's going to be happening on this channel going forward. You'll also notice that a lot of the artwork is changing. A lot of that has to do, again, with this book. He associates the elements with different colors, with different of the Chayat HaKodesh, the uh, Holy Living Ones, and I cannot find good reasons to argue against his schema, so I have adopted it. I hope that he is not offended that I am doing this. Um, I, I am using this work with reverence for my Jewish siblings, sisters, and brothers, but yeah, it it has really changed a lot, and I highly recommend this book if it's something that you think would help. I got it with this book, which is The Hebrew Priestess by Jill Hammer, and I, again, can't say enough good about this book, but that will be a future review. And there's a lot of practices, a lot of practices in here, a lot of things to think about. So if you want to kind of get a head start on future reading, I'm really working my way through that one right now. All right. Thank you so much for your time. And I'm going to be posting to this channel a lot more in future. I have figured out my recording setup and I hope you like it. And I have a lot to say. I have a lot of videos planned. Until next time, may the light of God shine upon you and ever guide you down the paths that you are meant to walk. Bye.